This video is for illustrative purposes only. It is not meant to be a complete and comprehensive guide for installing a two-post lift. It is meant as a reference for professional installers. We do recommend that you have your lift installed by a trained professional installer only, but we can arrange for your lift to be installed anywhere in the U.S. Please consult with owner's manual and contact tech support by phone with any questions. This is how the lift will arrive, all bundled together with steel and angle iron, and it is designed and packaged to be loaded and unloaded by forklift or other equipment. Lift comes with owner's manual and other helpful literature. Small parts will be located in a smaller parts box. Inspect the shipment prior to install to confirm all necessary parts and components are present. Many preliminary assembly functions are better done while the lift is still down on the floor, including initial routing of all the cables, hoses, pulleys, shifts, as well as the cylinders. Do not operate lift unless you've been properly trained to operate. Wear all proper safety glasses, hearing protection when drilling, and any other components you feel necessary. Before standing columns up, slide lift carriage up to aid in the routing of the equalizer cables and to temporarily remove cable sheets to help route the cables. Refer to owner's manual for proper cable routing. Make sure you have adequate ceiling height and confirm the concrete meets minimum requirements for thickness and hardness before installing. Concrete must also be level with no more than 3 degrees slope and with no major cracks or defects. Make sure you have adequate equipment and manpower on hand to complete the job properly and safely. Equipment may be necessary to raise the columns vertically for installation. Determine which end of the lift will be the approach end and where your power unit will be. On adjustable width models, determine the width setting. Once location and orientation has been determined, use chalk line to lay out placement and mark base plate locations and check all dimensions twice. Refer to owner's manual for safety release assembly and cable routing. Begin assembly of top cross member and pulleys. On all 9 and 10,000 pound capacity models, the top cross member can be set up at a wide or a narrow setting, depending on the width you choose to set up the lid. 12 to 18,000 pound models have a fixed width. We do recommend on those models that are adjustable to set them up at the wide setting as long as you have adequate floor space. All functions and operations are much easier at the wider setting and you'll be able to accommodate a wider variety of vehicles. Install the padded shutoff bar on the top cross member assembly. Fill the power unit reservoir with a typical 10 weight hydraulic oil and refer to owner's manual for the proper amount based on the lift model being installed. 10,000 pound models require approximately 4 gallons of hydraulic oil. Finalize final column positioning and using a rotary hammer drill with a masonry bit, drill holes into the concrete the required depth based on your model lift. Try to avoid letting the drill wobble while drilling and keep the drill as straight as possible. There is no harm in going all the way through the concrete as long as your concrete meets the minimum required thickness. Clean out the drill holes of any dust to assure the anchors fit properly in the holes. All mounting hardware comes standard with every bent pack lift. Tap the anchor bolts into each hole 
with a hammer until the washer rests against the base plate. Epoxy can be used, but it's not necessary. If the floor is uneven, shimming may be necessary. Sea shims are provided with every lift, so if necessary, shim until both posts are plumb. Tighten the nuts to the anchor bolts to the required tension specified in the owner's manual. Do not over tighten and very important, do not use an impact wrench. Attach arm restraint gears to lift arms. The gears are dedicated right and left, so be sure to attach the proper gear to the proper arm. Route equalizer cables and hydraulic hoses across the top cross member. Tighten all fittings. Attach equalizer cables to the lift carriage on each cowl. Adjust tension on the equalizer cables on the lift carriage inside the collar. Attach power unit to power side column. It's best to use two people for this operation to avoid dropping. Attach and tighten all hydraulic lines leading to the power unit. safety release cable across overhead cross member to opposite column. Isn't time-lapse video great? Attach arms to lift carriage with lift head pin. Insert the retaining snap ring into the groove of the lift head pin. Position and adjust arm restraint gears so that they mesh cleanly with the gears on the lift head. And rotate the arms to confirm the gears are working properly and that arm restraints engage when they're supposed to. Make final adjustments to the equalizer cable tension to assure both sides stay synchronized.
ensure that the arms don't move when a force of approximately 100 pounds is applied laterally to the fully extended arms. Arm restraints should be tested every time the lift is operated. There's an inspection port on the lower columns to allow access to hydraulic fittings and other components. Lubricate inside the four corners of the columns with a light axle grease and all cable sheaves with a light spray oil. Power unit connection should only be done by a qualified electrician. Make sure all cables are positioned within the grooves of all sheaves and have proper tension. Make sure all safety locks engage properly. Loosen the bleed screws at the top of the cylinders to bleed the trapped air and then retighten them. Test the lift by raising and lowering several times while not loaded and then test the lift loaded with the vehicle. Inspect the lift regularly as per the owner's manual. Then contact us at ASE Deals. We can install your lift for you anywhere nationwide. Give us a call today and we'll set you up right.